Hello my soccer universe! This video would have been scheduled if I wouldn't have a PC and I decided okay let's do as many as possible that I'm caught up and I can go back to regular scheduling and I actually always love to talk about the Netherlands and France for the simple reason there is loads of drama. We have on-pitch drama in the Netherlands where uh, we had a pretty big game between Feyenoord and AZ and now I think we can say it, it's a duel in the Netherlands for the title. Ajax having picking up the pace under Johnny Hatinga, the only game they have not won uh, is actually the one against Union Berlin in the um, Europa League. But other than that, Ajax have been going from strength to strength and Feyenoord also have been picking up the wins. A little bit more dramatic uh, than Ajax, but I think it's all coming down between those two. And I have a gut feeling that Feyenoord might rule that they didn't beat Ajax when they had the chance in the head-to-head. But -head. Well, Ajax just came a little bit back out of nowhere. And that was also a super dramatic cup game uh, involving Feyenoord which is one of the two contenders for the games in the last two weeks in these two leagues. The other one, of course, happened on Sunday in Paris early on. What a game between PSG and Lille. That's the whole other drama. The last time we talked, I said, you know, the results for PSG are going all right, but they don't look right. And then they lose three times in a row. Uh, especially the ones to Marseille and Monaco were really, really damning. And yes, they were both without Mbappé and uh, Messi also got injured in there. So he didn't uh, play for most of, of the time. But everything was looking really, really, really bad for PSG. And then they come uh, to kind of get things going. We have the three stars after Eat and Sleepgate. Uh, playing up front, all of them are scoring and still Lille were the better team and it's just the star power that pulled through and a Messi that, who has been anonymous the entire game scores the winner. However, these failures of PSG actually allow Marseille to get back into the game and OM have been really relentless. Um, I, we're not quite there yet that they're a championship contender. Uh, we have a big one come, coming up and it might as well be that after this one we might talk also about a duel for the title in France, especially if PSG do not get the SHIT together. Okay, let's move in. I actually want to start in France with the French Cup action. Uh, the results uh, here, and this is all, you know, almost two weeks ago already. Uh, Holders not win against Angers uh, against on penalties, and again in the French Cup there is no overtime, so uh, that's why you see four penalty shooters because it seems kind of natural. If you have only nine, 90 minutes, it's re relatively easy that a game uh, ends of a cup game ends up in a penalty shooter. Um, Lyon actually had a 2 0 lead through Cherki, and like, like I said, but John David and Che Grova. Uh, pulled it back again, it goes to penalty and Lille misses the last two. Um, Toulouse, a, a really impressive promoted team uh, this season. 3-1 uh, against Stade de Reims. Oh, I go, went over the league duel, the duel between uh, Paris and Onesi, where Onesi go through an epic penalty shootout, as you can see. Um, and then the other Paris team is also out. Marseille completely and deservedly ousting uh, PSG. Alexis Sanchez, the penalty just before the half, Sergio Ramos equalizes and then Malinowski, coming from Atalanta, gets the winner. But this was every bit deserved that win. And so the French Cup kind of opens up as well because the big giants, who have not been winning the cup for, for a while, are out. And then L'Oreal uh, also lose on penalties at home to loss. So uh, we have at least another good side up. And we already know the draw. We have the following quarterfinals. Uh, it's kind of a local duel between uh, Lyon and Grenoble. Uh, although Lyon will be the favorites. We have not uh, hold us not against Last and Toulouse against Rodet and uh, Marseille against Annecy. So all relatively clear favorites. Maybe not Last, but I think even there and Last 
should be favored to go on to the semi-finals and maybe there we could have some interesting results but yeah three league two clubs five league uh, clubs going to league uh I watched Monaco against PSG and it was a disaster. Uh, I mean, yes, there was only Neymar playing for PSG. Um, there was a many, you know, he saved some um, some players for the big clash against Bayern. However, the way they were outplayed and the optional defending, especially the first two goals through uh, Golovin and then Ben Yedda, uh, it just looked awful. The Emery pulls one back, but then just before uh, Ben Yedda makes it already the final score. There was no way that PSG are going to come, come back. And really, it started the house stars as a burning with uh, Campos, uh, the sporting director, having... Um, for, uh, you know, very intense discussions on the field with especially Neymar and, and so on. So things were not going well, as I already said at that point. Uh, but Monaco is a team that actually also, uh, we had Marseille and we have Monaco. I think those two teams are really on a roll. And there's a reason why I'm wearing Monaco, because they have been superb performers so far. Um, OM... Two, thanks to two Alexis Sanchez goals again one again a penalty a clear foot get a uh, two uh, nil win uh, of course we also need to mention to lose a three one over Ren with only the three nil win uh, lead at the halftime through the Tau, Abujal and Dalinga a uh, former Eredivisie top, 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 top scorer. Then they give away an own goal. But, you know, Ren also is such a so-and-so team. And they actually have, if you look at their squad, quite some good players. Always uh, wondering why they were not better. Lille uh, get a win 2-0 over Strasbourg. Uh, Reims a big one over Troyes. Not uh, Breton have 1-0 over Lorient. And then Lyon, a uh, uh, rare show of force. 2-1 over Lens, which basically eliminates Lens a little bit from title contention. Remember, they were up there when they beat at the beginning of the year PSG. Like I said, and Cherki getting the two goals. Uh, Machado can only level before the half. And then on the past weekend, yeah, uh, Osea beating Lyon. That are uh, a freak result in, in, in a way. Strasbourg getting a rare win, but it was against Angers, who are a kind of a relegated team elect. But it's all about PSG against Lille on this one. What a crazy game. I mean, it was, of course, after all the drama and the comments of Mbappé uh, saying, we know it to all eat and sleep well. And then Neymar going the next day. Of course, he had some of his birthday party as well. But gig and then next day to play poker and eat at the ad, McDonald's had all the media uh, stirred up in a frenzy already. Uh, but before the game, I actually was looking at, le at the body language and Mbappé made sure that, you know, we hug Messi, we hug Verratti and we hug Neymar, who, who is even kneeling in front of him, kind of trying to, no, no, we hug, we hug, we, we go out and we'll do it. And it seemed to work all right because after 70 minutes, it was a 2-0 Mbappé and Neymar, uh, and Neymar even assisting the Mbappé goal, although I think it was all Mbappé because the way he goes through two defenders. There is no way he can pass through there, but he uh, not makes the one, goes between the two, and then gets just ahead, ahead of the goal. It was an amazing goal, an absolutely amazing goal. And then Neymar also, a, a really nice move, and you thought, okay, Lil have to be careful uh, to not get completely played off the park. However, Dirkite, 24th, pulls one back, and then Lil is actually the better team. They get a really soft penalty at which point sport, uh, point sport director Campos is coming down on the pitch to really um, cause trouble. It was it was very, very, very weird. Even before that, Neymar had to be stretched off. Uh, Ekitike coming on. But it's 2-2. Uh, Jonathan David and then especially Bomba. Uh, the goal that he scored is really very much in his name. It was a bomb, a bomb of of a, of, of a goal that Donnarumma just he cannot do much, and so it seems that Lille is gonna see this home because there was really not much coming from PSG until uh, Bernat plays it back to Mbappe, who basically takes the ball away from Messi, who was anonymously the whole game, uh, but hanging there in in, in the back, but he gets the shot, uh, the ball on it. His, his foot on, on, on the ball. It is 3-3. Already an amazing game. 
but there was one crowning moment of glory where uh, a free kick is given away and Messi steps up. Yes, it was a goalkeeping corner. And I don't know, it was not Messi's best free kick to be honest, because it was just a laser down there against the uh, post and in and the stadium is going wild. Um, everyone hugging Messi and I think Mbappé couldn't stop hugging Messi ever after that. It was so weird overall. Uh, but I actually have, have that feeling PSG did not play well at all. It did not look good at all. However, this might be one of those wins that actually gets stuff together. Now, Neymar is out. I always maintain that uh, PSG do look better without Neymar, although Neymar can bring the special extra. Messi, yeah, you play with 10, 10 men and there was even one of the goals where uh, Mbappé basically said, no, no, I'm not defending. You guys take care, take care of that. This is still the trouble, but this win might be a moral boost for PSG. Uh, Monaco keep on their winning ways, Golovin and Boadou uh, getting the win after the win in Leverkusen. Uh, only a, a late goal back from um, Brest. Uh, Lorient get also a 3 0 win. Uh, loss against Nantes after not getting a draw at Juve. They cannot get the same at Lens, uh, who had twice a double uh, lead, uh, Machado Thomason, and then uh, Traoré on goal. Where it was 3-1 three, three and only, two, uh, only the 2-1 through Molle in the 40th minute. And then a rather entertaining game that I wish I would have, would have watched. And I think on any other match, that this would have been a match of the week between Toulouse and Marseille, where Toulouse actually um, dominated the first half, taking an early lead through Dalinga. However, Marseille come back after the half with Mbemba and Cengiz Under, turning the game around in short succession, and Tavares makes it a 3-1 lead. However, Onaivu, 87th, pulls one back and maybe it was in there. I mean, um, Toulouse could have had equalized to 2-2 two -two or already. So uh, Toulouse is not a team to be sneered at at all. They might not make it Europe, but they, they are definitely enriching the league. And so standings, it's five points between PSG and OM and it may get much tighter very, very soon. Still PSG are the big favorites, but I think they have reused up all their um, credit for now. We also have Ren moving up again a little bit, little despite the good performance uh, go going down. Lorient also come coming, but it's PSG, OM, and Monaco. I think those are the teams that will go into the Champions League. I have a feeling that Lens will now uh, um, taper off a teeny bit. On the bottom, uh, again, blue teams, Strasbourg moving out of the relegation zone. Auger, Done and dusted, um, and I think Troyes, Auxerre, Ajaxo, Brest, yeah, could very well be that uh, among those two teams, I actually think that Strasbourg should get out of it, but let's see. Uh, in the expect that's exactly as like Troyes, Auxerre, Ajaxo, Angers, and on top, everything as I said. I spoke about upcoming games. Look at the bottom on the left side. We have OM against PSG. I do not need to say more. And to uh, kind of sprinkle over, we have also Monaco against Nice. A really interesting duel there as well. And a Breton tower between Nantes and Rennes. So this is a pretty hot match day coming up in France. Um, whereas the week after, kind of a little bit, yeah, Rennes OM also not a better PSG against Nantes. Finally, an easy opponent for PSG, but it's never easy. And we have a uh, loss against Lille, not a hot duel. So really, really hot duels coming up in France over the next two weeks, which I think is rather interesting. Let's move on to the Dutch Cup. And you see the results already we had. AZ against Utrecht, it was not a 4-4, it was only a 1-1 and no Greek was scoring. AZ missed the penalty in the 86, but I think on the rebound, Carlsen then does convert. The winning goal came just early into uh, overtime through Maeda. So Utrecht moving on. Um, all third league teams except for the one where there was a duel, Spakenburg moves on over Katwijk. PSV is over Emmen after Emmen had beat them in the league, but you see it already. The big result, Feyenoord, Nijmegen, 4-4 after overtime, and then Feyenoord moving on on penalties. But that's not all. At the halftime, Nijmegen were leading 
to nil through Verdonk and Marquez. And it seems like they're going home easy. I have a Sandler penalty. Uh, Sandler uh, gives a, uh, get, gets Rekha. I, I assume he gave away the pen penalty. Kirchku equalizes the 90th and the two minutes later, Igor Paishao makes it 2-2. So the goal's coming really, really late for Feyenoord. Sets are sending them uh, into overtime where they immediately find themselves out to Brian. Ayva Jimenez and Dilor Sun turn it around in the 116th. You thought you'd won that, but Brian again scores for Nijmegen and it's 4 4. And then a penalty shootout where Feyenoord uh, goes first and the last Bronkhorst misses the fourth for Nijmegen and then Peshaw sends Feyenoord through. Uh, the big duel between Twente and Ajax goes Ajax's way through Mohamed Kudus, uh, winning that one. And so we have a draw. We have almost all the big hitters except for AZ in there. Uh, Feyenoord, PSV, Ajax are still and they're not playing against each other. Feyenoord probably have the toughest one with Heron Wein away from home. Utrecht have a home game against Spartanburg, the last um, third division team. And then Den Haag have to go away to PSV Eindhoven. So uh, we may get really interesting semi-finals if everything pans out. Uh, at Z, after the blip, destroy Excelsior 5 0. It was already 5 0 at the half. Uh, and, you know, Pavlidis only scored the last one there. Similar high score line for PSV against Groningen. Groningen in serious danger of getting relegated this time around. Uh, around the young and Simons getting it over than Breathweight, Bakayoko Silva, and Till. So six different goal scorers making it a rather impressive scoreline. I saw a little bit of Heron Wayne against Feyenoord. It was not an easy game for Feyenoord playing in black and pink. Uh, there was an early goal. It was uh, disallowed for uh, offside by Lankia and Jimenez give Feyenoord a seemingly safe lead. It seemed like they can play at home, but then Van Oettele uh, pulls one back and it got a little bit feisty towards the end. Uh, after Utrecht went on in the cup, they lose to Vitesse 2-0. Ajax, though, also find themselves down 1-0 to Valwijk, but then in the second half, turned around Proby Timber and Kudus again. 3-1 and 20 also stay up there. However, it was not to be for 20. Uh, because they then uh, lost to the go-ahead Eagles uh, last weekend. However, the big one there was Feyenoord against AZ. This was 1v2. A really, really big game, and it wasn't for uh, two teams that actually like to play nice ball. This was not a good game. It was very, very touchy, feisty. Uh, not, not, nothing really happened happening. And then the first goal is even a really uh, freak on goal by Dilo Rosun, uh, giving AZ the lead. However, with the Feyenoord got a little bit later into the game, and then uh, Crossbay to receive finds uh, Ali Reza Hambach who equalizes. And then for the longest of time, uh, Feyenoord then creating more chances in the second half, uh, pulling on the pressure, but it was nothing where I would say this is not a must score. However, Pedersen then takes a shot. It is deflected. It looked much better uh, in, ga uh, in game than when you see it in um, the replay. But it was a really nice shot from far up by Pedersen that gives in the 90th minute a big win for Feyenoord because a draw would have allowed Ajax to really go back and keep AZ alive. But now a five-point cushion to AZ means AZ are out of the title race and Twente also losing there. PSV will also not uh, join. I mean, uh, they played a 2-2 against Utrecht uh, with both teams uh, once having a lead. Um, you know, first uh, Utrecht through Busaid, then uh, Bakayoko and uh, the young turn around for PSV and Van der Streek shortly thereafter equalizes. But Ajax is still hanging around. And it's actually, uh, if you're a fan of it, yes, you had your draws and so on, um, but Ajax have been now winning four in a row. And quite some impressive score lines in there as well. Uh, it started with a 4 1 at Excelsior, then 5 0 away to Cambuur, uh, then the 3 1 against Valweg, and now 4 0 against Sparta. So Ajax actually getting on the roll again, and it's Tadic, Taylor, uh, and Kudus scoring the goals. We have. As I said, there's a title duel now. Ajax moving in second spot. It's three points behind Feyenoord. Feyenoord have to go to Ajax. 
uh, still, and this happens very, very soon, but at the moment it's still Feyenoord that are a slight advantage, but you see it's only uh, three points. AZ, I think, are out of it, as I think a PSV who are too inconsistent, although they would have the talent. And then Twente are also uh, are already a little bit back there. Um, we see also, you know, it is, it is a duel now. I don't think a PSV will get back. The next two rounds, we have a, a, actually uh, Ajax, not a, such an easy game at Vitesse versus Feyenoord at Sittard. Um, yeah, comparable. I, th I would say comparable. I think Vitesse have been better uh, as of recent. PSV against Twente is a big one for uh, the third spot. And then the week after, uh, Feyenoord have to play against Groningen, who, as we said, are in relegation trouble. Ajax against Nijmegen. Uh, Nijmegen caused some trouble. Uh, again, Vitesse has said Vitesse is having two interesting games. So, so much for me from the Netherlands and from France. Please add something if you uh, wish or if you have any questions, please let them know below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.